Let me just start with, uh, I bear witness that there is no God but God, and I bear witness that Muhammad Ibn Abdullah is a slave servant and last prophet. Nice to meet you, my brother. Mr. Sekou, the pleasure is mine. Okay. It is an honor. First and foremost, 50th anniversary. Being home with all the political prisoners, still in the fight and the struggle. Is there anything you want to say to the fans and to the 80 million viewers on the Truth About Tupac channel? Well, I think the first thing I would say about the truth of, uh, about Tupac is that he wasn't nothing but the truth. <laughs> he was the truth, you know. He, he was one of ours. We raised him, you know. He was raised among Black Panthers, the Black Liberation Army members. And so a lot of what he learned, he learned through us. We were some of his first teachers. Absolutely. And can you explain to us um, how the Shakur name was founded and what it stands for? Well, the name Shakur is the thankful or those who are thankful, thankful to the Creator for all that He gives us. Uh, the first Shakur out of our clan was Saladin, Saladin Shakur, uh, father of Zayd, Malik Shakur, and Lumumba Shakur. Yes. Uh, he was the first one. He was a, a comrade of Malcolm X. Uh, brother of Malcolm X, uh, a member of the Nation of Islam at the same time that Malcolm was. He left the nation uh, a little before Malcolm did, but uh, that's, that's where the name originated from. This is the one, Sekou, that was Tupac's uncle and uh, also a dear brother to Matulu Shakur, who just this February 10th has been given a chance to come on and join us. Um, as you know, he's uh, still in the fight and the struggle, but we'll be coming home soon. And uh, we want to say to you, brother, I could never break your spirit. And uh, we can't wait to have you come home so we can have you here on the truth about Tupac family and movement and hear your words direct. But as of now, we're going to get into your story and your history and your lineage. and. Uh, explaining the whole Shakur lineage as well and how, um, what it means to be a Shakur. I, I was talking to Malpreme Shakur and I was telling him that having your integrity and your identity, you know, at the end of the day, how many sacrifices your family has made towards the, the, the freedom of people and for the protection of people and, and all people, not just your own. And, I would love for you to elaborate and give us how it all, for you, where it all started. And well, first of all, let me just say that uh, although I feel that we are part of the same family, we're all uh, very close. I called Abba Abba, which means father, and I, I actually thought of him as a father. He was a father figure for me. Uh, many people especially in the areas where him and I were together, believed that he was my, na my natural father, which he wasn't. Um, my name, and my, my family name is, is Odinga. My name is Sekou Ungabavi Abdullah Odinga. Uh, Shakur, uh, we were very close. I grew up with the Shakurs. Yes. Lumumba was, at one point, my closest comrade, closest friend, and you know, uh, we come, we went to school together, we went to, the, uh, as youngsters, teenagers, we went to the joint together, yes. we came back, that's where I first heard of Malcolm, not first heard of him, but yeah, first really heard of him, and it was through Lumumba Shakur's father, the one I just was talking about. Abu Shakur, uh, he used to send us information about Malcolm, his speeches, uh, write-ups that other people had written about him, just trying to educate us about who he was and give us some of the ideas that he was putting forward. 
And so this was when we were like between the ages of 16 and 20. I was 16, I was 19 when I come home. I was 16 when I went to the joint. Wow. So, uh, they're 40 years. Well, not then. Not then, right? Not then. That was. Right. This was just a little youth bid. Youth I was a youth. It was a, I was a, uh, the, the charge was youthful offender, and so when I come out, I was looking for Malcolm. Wow! And so after finding him and listening to him and uh, being inspired by him and educated by him, but there was a whole lot of other things going on at the same time. This is night. This is 84, 85 actually, 84 mostly. Yes. Yeah, I come home to, uh, December 80, uh, I said 84, no, 64, 64. <laughs> 65. Yes. Uh, I come home uh, in 60, 63, December 63. Yeah, I come home 63, uh, December 63. So. This was the time when Malcolm was going through his transition, transition his changes yes. and from from the nation to his own thing, and but it was also a time when uh, the struggles in Africa, in Latin America, and Asia were rampant, and they were uh, they were they were influencing people. Uh, I was very heavily influenced around that time. In, into the the African cultural uh, thing, you know, um, the cultural nationalists in New York, especially, were very strong and very live and out there at the time, which is why I wanted one of the reasons that led to me changing my name from wow. my birth name, which was Burns, to Odinga, Sekou Odinga. Uh, which is what the name I've been carrying ever since '85. Uh, so it was the culture. It was uh, it was Malcolm. It was what was going on in Africa and what was going on in Harlem and the Bronx and Queens and Jamaica, where I'm from. You know, Jamaica Queens. Yeah, not not Jamaica. Not Jamaica. <laughs> not the island. island. Jamaica Queens, yes. New York. Yes. Uh, so these are the, the. It was those times and those type of activities, especially the the uh, cultural nationalism, revolutionary nationalism. Those nationalist uh, movements were very influential. And in my next question, which leads into you forming the uh, Panthers Party in the Bronx. Those of us that were uh, trying to build organization in New York, uh, those are the, the, the brothers and sisters that I was around. There were yeah. many people doing this. Yes. All right, so the, the ones that I was around, we were looking for a better vehicle than the one that we were involved in, a better organizational structure, when I say vehicle, a better organizational structure uh, when we first heard about the, Bla uh, the Black Panther Party in 66, 67, uh, especially in 67, I believe it was, when they went up to Sacramento uh, and uh, to protest them, trying to unarm them from carrying their guns openly. Yes. Uh, and we thought that that might be a better vehicle for us to deal with some cause uh, the abuse and terror and murder of police were rampant not only in uh, Oakland it was in New York and most of the ghettos uh, or most of the communities where nation. black people uh, lived uh, throughout the sea nation so uh, when we heard about the Black Panther Party, we we decided that we wanted to be a part of that. Uh, around the same time was when people from the Black Panther Party came to New York and wanted to build a chapter there. So I was involved with uh, helping to build the first uh, chapter, and I was selected to be the the section leader of the Bronx in the chapter that I was a, a part of, the New York chapter. Which is where uh, Feeney Shakur uh, 
she joined that chapter. Oh, well, she well actually what we had was uh, I hadn't met Afeni before this. Actually. Really? Yeah, I met, I met her a little before that. She was uh, mm -hmm. she was a, a a friend and eventually the wife of my closest friend, friend Lamumba Shakur. Yes. Uh, uh, but what we had was because we didn't have our resources were so short initially. Uh, what we did was establish what we call the Harlem Bronx section of the Black Panther Party, which was in one building in Harlem, and we all worked. All, all of us was working out of Harl uh, the Harlem office. Uh, the 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 place that we actually met in in the Bronx was my apartment. That's that's where we met at in the Bronx. Wow. Was my wow. apartment, but uh, I, the office that we worked out of was the uh, was in Bronx. It was in Harlem, actually. That's uh, interesting because um, I remember uh, his stories hearing how you had escaped and jumped out of a window to get away. When, well, this uh, is later on. This is years later. Was that the same apartment? No. Okay. No, that was okay. a different apartment. At this time, I was living in I was living in Brooklyn, in the area where I come out the window and was able to elude uh, the forces, the state forces that were trying to capture me. This was during the, the, the Bunchy Carter. This was the same. This was after, but I went underground uh, the night that Bunchy Carter was killed, January seventeenth. January 17 but that was about something that was happening in New York in New York City yes. but this was a few months later than that this was April I believe it was April 2nd 1969 when uh, they the, the New York uh, police, department. police department and the FBI tried to capture and, and indict and lock up 21 of the leading cadre in New York, and the Panther Twenty One, the famous Panther Twenty One, yes, and most of them came out of our chapter, the Bronx, Harlem. You know, uh, in fact, they tr they basically uh, indicted all of the leadership of the Bronx and Harlem chapter of the Black Panther Party. Was that because you guys were so influential in other different? Uh, Yes, but it was, it was definitely second. because we were definitely uh, some of those who were out there really struggling and, and, and being very successful at the end of the struggle. Our communities were really relating to us. We were able to do things such as uh, prevent people from being uh, evicted. Uh, uh, Acupuncture, food programs, organizing education. people, all that came later, but yeah, all of that, yes. you know, we was, able, uh, we was able to build a free health clinic, we was able to uh, build the, the Breakfast for Children program, we was able to have the first sickle cell uh, testing in the wow. country, actually. Wow. Uh, so we was able to do a lot of things in, in in the New York uh, chapter of the Black Panther Party and the Bronx and ha Bronx Harlem chapters were were had some of the leading cadre Cam of of the, the whole chapter. So, but we worked. We didn't work just in there. We worked in New York City. We didn't just if something was going on in Brooklyn, we would be right there in Brooklyn. We would, if something was going on in Queens, we'd be in Queens. If something was going on in Harlem, we in Harlem. Something going on in the Bronx, we'd be in Bronx. What were some of the things that you remember, um, you know, when it comes to having that kind of, what can I say, you have a solution to a problem. So many problems, so many things going on in the 60s. I mean, what were the conversations like? What were the strategies? What were some of the tactics used to be able to tackle on so many problems and be a solution? First, identifying the problem. Most of the most of the problems were identified by our communities. The community come in with this slum lord won't give us no heat. It's freezing in such and such a tenement. Uh, how can we make him give us some heat? God. Uh, then, so that's what we got to do. Come up with brainstorm. How we gonna make him give us some heat? 
you know, uh, one of the, one of the ways we actually for, one of the ways was going to him first, <laughs> give him some heat, you know, straight you know, up that simple. Then if he's not going to do it, then organizing the 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 tenement to withhold your rent, right, you know, right. and if, if if they don't if they still continue not to give you the heat. Use the money you holding withholding the rent, the rent to get heat in there yourself. The you know, mm-hmm. so uh, so. But basically, what I'm saying is the 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 ideas came from the community. The solutions came from the community along with us. We all brainstorm. Yeah, you know. Credit what, can, what what can we do to feed to feed children before they go to school? Because they can't they can't really do their work. Adequately, if they sit in there with their stomachs growling, you know. So those are things that uh, those ideas come from the community. You know, how can we stop the police from killing us, brutalizing us in the streets? You know. Absolutely. So we come up with ideas how to how to do that. You know, how how do we help this sister get what she's supposed to get when she go to the welfare office and they tell her. Look, Miss, we don't have time for you. Uh, come back another day, yes. and her children are laying home hungry in the day, crying. You know? yes. So we come up with ways to do these things because we had to do them because it was necessary to be done on the spot. We didn't have time to wait six months, eight months, a year before these solutions, before these problems were found solutions. So we dealt with them right then. My next question: uh, the difference between the Black Panther Party and the Liberation Army. Black Liberation Army? Yes. Uh, Black Panther Party was basically an above ground organization, an organization that was there to to serve and defend the 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 community openly. Okay. The the Black Liberation Army was a uh, an organization that was was uh, established to defend and and serve the community underground clandestinely clandestinely without being known without being see by us stri- uh, struggling and striving so hard above ground we were very openly doing this and so everybody knew who we were Mm -hmm. and we were targeted so just like when I talked about the 21 members being uh, targeted indicted and locked up most of us was locked up I think it was only four of us that wasn't captured at the time Uh, they were able to take all those that leadership off to the ground and make us work make those left out there work basically to try to free them you know most of the the resources now was going to lawyers going to bails going to the families of the 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 members who were incarcerated who had been the only breadwinners now their children and their wives or their husband or whatever it was whoever the grandmothers whoever was taking care of the kids now was left there to cope without them so we had to try to raise money to and uh, raise the, the consciousness of the people to build the support I mean it was all about that which took away from from the community the service that we had been given them you know which was part of the the tactics of COINTELPRO they knew say. that we would probably beat them, them cases because it was totally Fabricated from start to finish, but it disrupted the leadership and it disrupted the whole the, the organization because now instead of uh, having being able to deal with the problem of the community, we having to deal with our own problem. You know, absolutely and it made so you they, more of an individual and, and, organization. And those who were actually leading the fight to uh, to for the uh, the struggle to serve the people were now in prison, right, or on the run, right. You know? Now speaking of prison, wrongfully uh, accused of shooting a police officer. Yeah, what well, well, I was uh, uh, one of the charges were uh, shooting at a police, police officer. officer. <laughs> you know, and I was I was charged with attempted murder uh, while running from the police, 
uh, at the same time after doing my capture with my comrade, my comrade was murdered. You Rest know, in while, while he let lie on the ground after surrendering. And this is the same case that Asada Shakur, you with. well no, she oh. had this was after after Asada Shakur had been uh, liberated. This liberated. was a couple of years after the Asada Asada was uh, liberated November second, nineteen seventy nine. My capture was October twenty third. 1981 so that's two uh, years later two years later you know Got it. when the brother that passed in the New Jersey incident was it true that the police officer was shot by his own officer in crossfire you guys didn't even have weapons yeah that's right from what I'm told I wasn't there but, the, yeah. but when she was captured yeah it, 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 he was it, it ain't it's, it's no secret that he was <laughs> right. he was shot by the the weapon, but they're saying that uh, one of the comrades disarmed him and used the weapon to uh, to to uh, shoot the officer. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Marilyn Buck. This was a woman who gave her life. A white Caucasian woman that gave her life for the cause. So there was um, Caucasians involved in helping and. and yeah, we had, we had many uh, uh, white comrades that, throughout the country that that aided uh, the struggle of, 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 uh, of our, uh, the new Africans or the black folk, the black people, you know. Yeah. Uh, there was quite a few anti-imperialist comrades throughout the country. We always uh, uh, were able to work with Others, Chicanos, Puerto Ricans. Yes. Uh, that was always part of our uh, our strength, actually. Being that diverse. Being able to work with others, yes. but recognizing that we were our own leaders. Yes. And they were leaders in their struggles, whatever it is, their purpose, you know. But when they work with us around our issues, we lead. Got it. You know, so if the Chicano go working on his issue, he leads. You uh -huh. know, the Puerto Rican working on his issue, he leads. And those who who support uh, uh, the anti-oppression, who support the liberation of the old press, they, they'll they follow those and work in harmony with them. You know? And that brings me to my next question, which is, now in this day and time in 2016, and what you've seen and how many different um, political prisoners that are under a lot of scrutiny when it comes to being terrorists or um, still have issues within the international community like how does that fit with you knowing that you've given so much and sacrificed for so many not just your own and still see that we're right back in the same fight well, we've been in the same fight since the first African was kidnapped from the shores of Africa. Uh, people have been fighting for their liberation since then. So it's, uh, it, I'm glad to be a part of the struggle <coughs> in my time. And I stand on the shoulders of those before me. I stand on that Turner's uh, yes. uh, shoulder. I stand on uh, Denmark Vesey's shoulders. Yes. I stand on... James uh, uh, John Brown's shoulder. Yes. I stand on Malcolm X's shoulder. You yes. know, I, so we stand on the, the the shoulders of the giants that came before yes. us. You know, because they, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have made it to where we were. Us. And so each generation has to accept their own responsibility for their own liberation. We have to be our own liberators. Absolutely. And, and so we. We just uh, we accepted our responsibility in that time, and we did what we could to to further the struggle of, of uh, liberation for uh, uh, new African people, black people in this country, and it is the job of the the young folks today to do the same by by studying their history, understanding what we did, checking out and understanding the the successes and the mistakes that we made and trying not to make the same mistakes but trying to uh, 
carry on the successes you know, for this time because you can't really take what was done in 68 and just transport it yeah. to 2016 you have to but you can look at some of the ideas and some of the programs some of the act activities of that time and say well wow they were able to do that maybe we can do something similar today to well that's, that was well that's why we're here with the truth about Tupac with 80 million viewers 800,000 subscribers to honor the ones of those who are still with us in this Black History Month you well, most let me of the say time, oh yes, I'm sorry no no yeah. it's okay uh, 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 if we're gonna if we're gonna remember and honor uh, those we definitely need to honor our political prisoners we definitely need to uh, remember who they are or find out who they are if we don't know who they are because many people don't even know that we have many uh, uh, political prisoners and prisoners of war right, right here now. in this country yes. that have been in the jails for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, as much as 50 years. Many of my comrades that are still in, uh, behind the wall have been down for 30, 40 years. You wow. know? Uh, and, and they're still there, and a lot. And this country uh, tells the lie that there is no political prisoners in this country when there's probably more in this country than anywhere else. And uh, you know, because you've seen it. I've been a part, but everybody okay. knows. They just stop and think about yes. it. Uh, 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 but it, right here in this country itself, on on this land itself, there's many political prisoners. In, in right there in Car uh, uh, Colorado, Florence, Colorado, wow. or in the upstate joints in, in New York, yes. or, uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, where the, uh, we had the Omaha, uh, the Nebraska too, or the Omaha too over there, or, yes. or in Atlanta where you, you had Jamil Alamine and Baranza uh, uh, Bowers. Uh, all over the country, we have many, you know, a lot of people that heard about Abu Jamal, uh, uh, Mumia Abu Jamal, uh, or, or uh, the Native American Leonard Peltier, or Oscar Lopez from the Puerto Rican uh, struggle. So, there's many political prisoners, and we need to support those. Our people, those are those 80, how many million is out here? 80 Listen, million viewers, 800,000 yeah. subscribers. Those, those viewers need to find out who these people are and show them some love, show them some support. These are the people who sacrifice their lives, their family lives for us. We need to support them and, and put a little, make a little sacrifice for them. To write a letter to to your your Congress people and say, well, you need to free these political prisoners. Uh, write a letter to the president and say, well, you need to free these political prisoners. Write the political prisoners themselves and say, we love you, we support you, we understand why you did what you did, and we support that. You know, because they. These are the same. These are our Nelson Mandela's. Yes. These are the people who did the same thing that Nelson Nelson yeah, Mandela yeah. did. That we all say right on to. That's right. We should say the same thing to our political prisoners. Right that's here. right. And that's why we're here right now on the Truth About Tupac, giving you this exclusive interview with the one and only on the Black History Month, Sekou Odinga, the father. Gaddafi. Dad, is that alright? Who was Gaddafi? <laughs> we, uh, I like to, I asked mom to put this picture here, right here, because this is, um, this is, um, uh, interesting, because she told me at age four, you were, um, snatched away from him. Snatched away. Yeah. Yeah, Phil, I can yell it. That was his name. He was better known as Gaddafi. He was one of the outlaws that was uh, with the group that was with uh, Tupac. And was on many of his uh, albums, you know, his songs. Yeah. That was my son. Yes. Yes, Dad. Uh, to be here in your home and to know that a man like yourself has sacrificed so much for us as young men, and know that you have. Eternally, a son is in the essence. Yeah. And you have sons right here and daughters that are so proud to have your story 
to have your testimony and your glory here in the flesh and we want to honor you so we don't get to tell our loved ones in the flesh how much we appreciate and are thankful for you. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate the sport. Uh, and uh, I would hope that whatever honor and love you have for me, you remember it for my comrades that's left behind them bars and, and give them that support and help. let's help bring them out. Let's help free them because they're the ones right now that need your support even more than I do, you know. So, so we need to, as we always say, free them all. Free them all. Yeah. And we want to say thank you to Mama Yasmin for giving us this opportunity with Dad. And we need to say that this is Yasmin's house. <laughs> yeah. This is not my house. Okay. house. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and I thank her for allowing us to uh, to be here and to to talk as we have talked with each other. You know. To all our political prisoners, stay strong. It's the truth about Tupac signing out. And like our dear father said, free them all. Free them all. Free them all. Free them all.